Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hit or Die podcast. We host Jake Seldon and Chad Rawford, and you all know him. He's back. back. He's back. He's back. Um, Josh Labandera. Labby, thanks for uh, coming back on the show. We missed you. You're, uh, I, I, you're our Mr. Warmth. For those that don't know who that is, that they don't know. Uh, that's scary. Yeah? Yeah, that's, that is scary. Don, Don Rickles was Mr. Warmth. So Mr. Was, Warmth. Oh, man. Just reminds me of that. Very honest. Very, uh, oh, but you know what? Like, not lies. No, I just, I mean, there's so much stuff going on out there that, you know, you don't get told the truth. I mean, just, just look at our everyday life for that matter and put it on the wrong news channel. So, uh, hey man, it, it is what it is. Sometimes you just, you, you, uh, you gotta be as upfront and honest with people and it just, it, it's going to help them gauge themselves on where they may be, especially with what I do. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it doesn't do you any favors to, to not be true. No, I mean, if, if I'm lying to some kid telling them I'm taking them in the second round, I'm really not helping that kid, <laughs> no. you know, like, but if there are some things that, you know, and everybody's deficient in certain areas, I mean, including myself, don't think I don't go without getting a review every year from my bosses. So, um, hey man, like that's how, that's how you get better. Like people, oh, you go out and play. No, you fix the things you're not good at and you work at things you're not good at. And on, honestly, you know, you polish off the, you polish up the things that you are good at, but you also really want to focus on things you're not good at. And those are really the only things that are going to get you over the hump. And if you sit around lying to people, man, like, I don't know, it's just not the kind of, I didn't want to get lied to as a player. And, um, I, I don't think parents or, or kids want to get lied to either. So you try to be as upfront and, and, and forward with them and um, just honest, man. Yeah. Just be honest. No, I love it. That's, uh, that's how you get better, too. You know, like, again, like you said. Right. Uh, lots going on. First, uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. It's been a couple of weeks. Uh, go go follow, subscribe, download. If you're not downloading, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. Uh, if you haven't checked out Coach Fulmer's episode, the last one, uh, you should. There's some really good stuff in there. Uh, it's Ross, former uh, coach in college. But uh, a lot of stuff going on. You were before we just started recording. You were talking about uh, certain things that I'll post behind it, like travel stuff for this summer. But you were getting into how they were scoring, like how they're scoring hits or something. Yeah, I, man. You were talking about Freddie Freeman. That was the one you were talking. I about. I was just surprised last night. You know, like when a ball's in the air and a guy's like fairly, I mean, almost camped under. I know, I know he he went into the wall, but I mean that's an average play for a big league center fielder. Like if you're at that level, like that ball, when it goes up in the air, you're the manager, that ball's caught dude in your mind. Um, and then they give it a hit was even more surprising. Um, I don't know. I've just seen this year. There's been a lot more leniency on hits. Um, they're not holding God. I I mean, I remember Todd Pratt telling me, do you, you earn your hits in the big leagues? And he wasn't joking. I mean, you hit a ball on the screws and a guy makes a play, but now it's like, they're just kind of, I don't know if that's maybe to help pad the, the the lower batting average, kind of bump it up a notch. But I, I've just noticed it's, it's become a lot more lenient, and um, even travel ball. I mean, good. If I'd have did the stat tracker, I'm sure a lot of statistics guys' numbers <laughs> would have changed uh, over the summer. But um, yeah, man, it hits a hit, dude. You earn it. Like, and I'm a firm believer in that. Like, I don't know. I, I never wanted to sit around and collect garbage hits. Like, I actually, you know, you wanted to you wanted to earn your knock. You'll so. take a garbage hit, though. Yeah, man. I mean, don't it, get me know, wrong. Don't we'll take, take them. Me. Well, I know, you know. But that's not your, just what you're trying to do. You're trying to get a bloop singles and yeah, see I mean, eyes. A, no, I'm, a jam job knocks different than a dude that should have filled the ball and went under his glove. Like, that's way different than, you know, staying inside a baseball. Maybe. Right. Just muscling one. Well, when there's a job with with head, you know, (laughs) when there's a job uh, to do, you'll take that. You know what I mean? Like if there's a runner to third and absolutely the jobs to get him in, you'll take whatever you get out of it. Well, that's the other thing too. (laughs) Like I've noticed a big difference when I talk to kids about situations, like what to look for, like, or, or what type of uh, contact you're needing in a situation, whether it's infield in, infield back, like it's just, um, it's a one dimensional swing man it's it swing hard and, s- and try to hit it far that's it like it's not direction or hey the infield's back i'm gonna work on getting top of the ball maybe hit it to the shortstop second base get a free stake or or the infield's in hey i'm gonna look for something to elevate like i just see a lot of the the little intricacies of baseball like the, the actual game of it it's getting lost uh you know you just don't see those situations i think maybe i put on two hit and runs all summer like you talk about hit and runs and um 
or even a, a fake steal with the drag bunt. Like these guys aren't understanding strategy. And, and, you know, after being around watching college baseball last, last spring, I mean, a lot more home runs are being hit. Like I think three or four schools in my area broke their single season home run record. So, um, just the quality of, of the game is, is just kind of, I feel like it's getting left aside and it's all more so about like the big, the one big swing rather than maybe the little pieces of, of the puzzle that lead up to that one big three run bomb. Well, they don't talk about the drag bunt base hit or, you know, the guy stealing second or maybe working a count. They don't talk about that stuff anymore. It's, it's a lot more just, Hey man, get in the box and grip rip right. and, Hey, what's my exit velo? Hey, what was my launch angle? It's 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 a whole different thought process, man. Yeah, um, dude, I forgot. We opened up another store for the people out there that missed it. Another store, I forgot. You're talking about home runs in your area, and the first thing that I thought of right then and there is, you know, we only saw how many teams on the West Coast represent. College baseball, Stanford and yeah, there Oregon, was, Santa Clara. I'm just saying there was one regional <clears throat> west yeah. of Texas, and that was Stanford's. Yeah, um, and then Oregon made their you know little run there to the supers, and uh, but yet you're saying you know you got teams that are breaking records. Yeah, like where where's the West Coast missing the boat? You think? I uh, I mean they just can't. It's a it's turning into the SECs like the power. And the SEC, the, the, the Power Five schools, that the East Coast is really pulling ahead. And it's probably more so, I would have to say, from what they have to offer these kids. Um, Resource-wise. Yeah. Facilities. Yeah. Facilities, like, attendance, um, you know, just the gear and NIL money. I mean, look, dude, we lost a kid. I mean, I lost my number one prospect next year, Braden, uh, Braden Montgomery from Stanford. Like, he went in the portal, and he's going to, I think it's A&M. Um, and... Dude, he's walking. It's so wild. Like nobody would think about it. He's walking away from the Stanford education. Like that's long-term education. Like we have kids turn down millions. I mean, I, if you could made a list of players that turn down millions of dollars to be drafted to go to Stanford, much less now right. he's leaving Stanford. So, um, you know, UCLA lost two big arms, Thatcher Hurd and a kid named Cage uh, Jump, uh, left-hander. Both went to LSU. Like it's just a bigger scale, and um, the West Coast schools. It's we just it, it's hard to offer what those what those conferences and schools are offering these days. Do you think the the new? I mean, college football plays a role, right? The new realignment mm -hmm. and killing the Pac-12. Yeah, it's. I mean, now we're gonna we see it even decline even more. Super sad. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know if the Pac-12, Pac-4, Pac-3, Pac-2, whatever it is anymore. It's I don't know if it's gonna be able to. Uh, stay around. I mean, who knows if Cal, I mean, there's been rumors that Cal could lose, not just not having a conference, they could lose Sports. their whole athletics. Yeah, I mean, crazy. Um, Stanford, I think, you know, they stand on their own two feet. They're going to be similar to Notre Dame and they're kind of independent. To, yeah. Route. They'll be able to dictate like their path, but you know, where's Washington, where's Washington state fall in? Where's Oregon state fall in? I mean, uh, they probably wouldn't want to go to the Mountain West, but hey, man, you slide to the Mountain West. Now that makes the Mountain West a little, a lot more competitive on both and in a, in a couple different areas. Primarily, in my, you know, football I think would be better, uh, as well as baseball. So, um, but yeah, man, there's a lot of slippery sliding going on out there, and is it for the better? I don't know. Uh, I know what it does to my area. I know what it does to to what these players want to be doing and where they want to play ball. So. Uh, that's just the state we're in right now, unless the NCAA changes some things, which I highly doubt. Um, we're just going to keep heading down this path. Fulmer was talking about transfer portal, mm -hmm. and you were talking about West Coast and stuff like that, thinking about ways to, like, slow it down. And I think he said something regarding, um, what was it? If you offer a kid that's, like, <laughs> – 10th grade or ninth grade like at that point like sign the contracts you should just if you're going to commit to a kid and they're going to commit to you it should just be a done deal put it on the dotted line there's no decommits don't don't recruit a kid have them commit and then wait you know until it's the the their last yeah. second to to uh to sign him to commit to him no doubt yeah and then i was thinking about this the other day i think you and i talked about it chad is like the other thing is you know when you see 41 42, 45 roster sizes. Yeah. Like, let's cut the roster down. I bet you that'll stop some portal stuff, too. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't... 
I tell kids this all the time, and it's always been this way on the pro side. Now it's on, it's just trickling into college athletics as well. But like we live in an upgrade industry, like. Plain and simple, like you might have hit 20 bombs. Well, guess what? There's somebody on the market that hit 27. We're going to go get him. Or somebody hit 290. Well, there's somebody out there to hit 305. So, you know, you're not safe, man. Like, I don't know how to make anybody feel more safe, but you're, you're not safe out there anymore. Like, you're, you're on a year-to-year scholarship, essentially. Like, they can pull the plug, and you can pull the plug at any point point in time jump in the portal and and go get a fresh start that you know there's no repercussions there's no sitting out um there, there's no i i mean it, you can have a kid committed for three years and a week before you pull your commitment and like leave them high and dry there's no punishment so until they start you know really regulating uh schools and and keeping their thumb on them like dude it's gonna keep being like the wild west man roster sizes guys changing year to year um just many then you have guys get in the portal and nobody grab, grabs them and they're they just go back to their college like if i was the coach i'd be like no man dude you wanted to find somewhere else to go then go now yeah. like i don't I want think you at that back. point once you once you're in like that should be a one thing like you can't go back no yeah. but once you declare that should be you know it's man it's like you don't you don't want to take opportunities away from kids and stuff but at some point like what does the word commitment mean? Like when you say, Hey, I'm going to your school. Well, how long? What next fall? What two months you're going to up and bounce. You'll be at another school by January. I mean, um, they just need to start hammering these kids, man, whether it's losing eligibility or, or, or hammering the school and, and taking some money away or, um, you know, this NIL deal, like that's fine. They want to pay these players. So, okay. Well now these players that get these big NIL money, they can, how about they just pay for their tuition then? open up another scholarship for maybe a kid who's not doesn't get that kind of nil right. money um you know why why do you have to get everything you know what i mean like it used to be you're getting education but apparently the education isn't valuable enough anymore now everybody needs money um which, well, and now well, i'm not saying there's nothing wrong no with that. no like, you want to pay some of these kids but dude these some of these athletes are making a lot of dough dude to be a professional college athlete like man you it's hard for us to sign some of these guys. Like, yeah, why am I going to go to the draft when I'll make more money? Yeah, like in, in college this next year. A kid from the SEC, if he's a power five, you know, a big school in the SEC, like what's what's fifty thousand in the twelfth round going to do when he's making a hundred and he's got a Campbell soup billboard and a, he's driving a you know Ford F two fifty out. You in the come park. back yeah, that I senior mean, year. You're coming back. So, yeah. um, man, it's just all about the almighty dollar, and it's too bad that the game's lost the purity and integrity that I think it and that's had. where a lot of people were commenting on football like you saw you sent me that one coach what was it Missouri's head football coach talking about like you know the rules it's hurting the it's hurting the other sports the rules that players have to face like they can't do this can't do that and then the adults in the room go right around and do whatever they want yeah like nobody thought about well what about the kid that's playing tennis and we'll cho- travel. And, and we'll chose, travel. He's yeah, talking can, about like you know football. We travel once a week. What about baseball having to travel now across the country mm-hmm. to play Friday, Saturday, Sunday, then go back across the country time zones, play on Tuesday yeah. or wherever they have to go. The the adults aren't thinking about the other sports. They're just thinking about football the dollar and, and the and the, the money, money football. Can well, make. it's all about the money. I mean, it's just business. I mean. We say athletics, and that's what we sit around and feel like we're watching, and we're, we're all loving it. Uh, but at the end of the day, when those people sit down at the table, it's not to watch the game or or what the integrity of the game is about. It's about okay, how much money are we going to make on concessions? How much are we making on ticket sales? How much are we making uh, on whatever whatever they want to try to charge you for to to add more money to the to the pool? So, did, did you watch that Manzel? I did. I did. Did you watch it, Roth? Yeah. So the one thing that I took away from that was the money after he won the Heisman at that school. Gener- was it was at seven hundred and forty million Buku bucks. Yeah, and, it, of, and, and after that, I mean, the stadium's already massive. Holds what it said, hundred thousand people. 100, I think yeah, one hundred plus. I'm thinking as a dogs fan <laughs> trying to raise two hundred forty million to elevate seven like that would take twenty years for uh, for us and where we're at. I, how how do you raise seven hundred? They did that. Like a whole that. different, yeah, a whole different scale, um, just different. I mean, that's the big conference. But think, there, how many of those? There's Baylor, you know, A and M, Texas, 
Texas Tech. How big, Tex- is, a, how, how big is the horseshoe at the Ohio State? That's the horseshoe. I don't. Right? Yeah, I don't know how. I don't know. How I don't think that's as big just because of the horseshoe. Ann Arbor's big. Yeah, hundred another hundred hundred nine or something. Yeah. Well, Fresno is not going to. Yeah, that that would. Just what be I'm an saying. What would it? What would it take for a, a Fresno State? Just to, just to do that. I mean, what they did in that amount, short amount of time and money wise, it's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Well, they're ripping through those. Uh, Ripping through those Manziel jerseys, that's for sure. They I mean, keep them in stock. What? I mean, did you did you like that? I don't, I don't know. I mean, thinking about him as a college football player, he's pretty pretty stud, man. He's I, looking back on it now, like it makes me disappointed because Bush got his shit taken away, right? Yeah, and then yeah, I saw that tweet. This out guy there. comes out pretty much saying everything was a lie, right? And he gets and I made all this it. money, yeah. and he gets to keep his Heisman. Well, the memorabilia, what he was doing on the side, that was. Yeah, he was doing. I remember that being reported on then too. Like I remember that stuff going down. Absolutely. But why does he get it taken away? I mean, Bush, you know, accepted things. He accepted things. Like, I think Bush should get his Heisman. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Just because he's in the top five of college football players of all time. Reggie Bush was one of the most exciting college football players that I ever watched growing up, and even into my college years, and and. Until now, I think Reggie Bush was still the, the most exciting, uh, electrifying college player. And yeah, man, you need to give that dude back as Heisman. He didn't do anything that these dudes nowadays aren't doing. Yeah. Uh, he And his is probably on a much lower, like he probably deserved way more money than what these dudes are getting 100%. Today. So, He's worth more. Yeah. I no mean, question about did it. Did his NFL career match up? No. But from a call, you know, look at Vince Young. You can say the same thing. Vince Young had an awesome collegiate career yeah how many millions would he have been worth in college well and let's not like let's not sit around and act like we're all like these dudes didn't have any extra perks that were at these schools like i'm sure there was a couple hundred thousand dollar handshakes going on at alumni events within most of these it's going on still it was going on 20 years ago it's yeah i mean you know it's just out way more out in the open yeah you Uh, had the smu deal or was it yeah law or somebody yeah Yeah, Yeah. that stuff's going on everywhere i mean it's not gonna try to throw old bulldogs in there but you know the basketball a lot of the basketball (laughs) players had special parking (laughs) passes dude they parked in different places that other athletes didn't park in when i was in college that's hey man is what it is. That's the way it rolled. Maybe. I mean, among other things with the parking. I'm class. sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was like what was noticeable to, for, to, to us for sure. Was, well, and that's funny because that was your time at Fresno State. Yeah. And, you know, Tark was there prior to, uh, well, Tark was there when I was there and, and prior to coming in. And, you know, you look at the, that basketball program was always like, people knew about Fresno State. But once that Heron and, man, once that rolled into town man like fresno state was on the national pedestal at that point especially in hoops so uh yeah man those guys had a couple of extra privileges that maybe some of the other athletes didn't have i just think i was just that, that was my main takeaway was the money like good god like that's that's what we're a mid-major is up against mm-hmm. and there's no competing with that no period you're just not going to no so it's pretty crazy uh hey some baseball stuff that's happened while we were away uh, Tim Anderson loses his bout to, uh, Jose Ramirez. Uh, Chad thought we haven't talked about it. So I, I mean, I know it's a week and a half ago, but I don't, I don't give a shit. Right. Yeah. I thought I loved it. Like you want the smoke, bro. You got, you threw Heath. Tim Anderson's the one that threw him down. He's the one that hockeyed up. Yeah. I mean, he, he wanted he got, a piece. He got clipped. I don't know if, you know, Ramirez actually laid his foot down and threw that. <laughs> I don't think he, he didn't see it either. either. No, he was throwing know. the Conyo haymakers. It was, yeah, it dude, was blind. Uh, hey, still though. But you know, he clipped him. He went down. Uh, I thought it was rather interesting. Like the umpire, like made the gesture to kind of get in there. Then he was just like, Ah, uh, fuck this! I'm gonna take a step. <laughs> he back. got out and, of dodge, real and he quick. got back. And um, don't be surprised. I would not be surprised if we started seeing that more often now, um, where guys are gonna go out and the umpires act like they're gonna get in. They're just gonna let them go. It's gonna be like hockey and see if somebody drops. And it's gonna be whatever sells and whatever gets the most views on Twitter. And um, the our commissioner will probably find a way to to make it happen, you know, and be laying odds while these guys are fighting. So. I mean, do you did you have any problems with it though? I didn't. No, I, didn't I didn't care. No, I didn't. It didn't. I didn't know if anything happened during the game because it didn't look like. No, I think that that this goes I, years back. Like, I guess I think, oh, it's just a. Well, he's you know, notorious. That kind of said like he's notorious for making some aggressive hard, hard tags, tags that yeah. aren't needed. Yeah. Even to put a tag on, like he just you know, and 
It's whatever. I don't have a problem with hard tags. I'll tell you that much. No, but. not enough to get in a fight about it. But maybe it, it maybe it'd been going on. Maybe that was like the last straw. I, but I like it. Like if you're gonna let the boys play or let the kids play or whatever their deal is, like it can't just be to celebrate bat flip with bat flips and you know shit like that. Like if they gotta go, let them go. Hundred percent. Like absolutely. Like I, I don't know. That's what I think used to make baseball so special. Like I was watching the game last night with my wife, and it was like a comeback to the mound. He turns around, throws a second. And, you know, the guy covering second, it was just this so easy for him. He had he didn't have to avoid no runner. He didn't even have to stay on the bag. Like, he just catches it and throws it to first. Like, we've gotten so – it's become so soft. Like, you can't run into anybody anymore. It's you like, can't take uh, nobody out. Like, Well, no, he his first year in pro ball, didn't you break That's your, how I broke my leg was yeah, the dude took me out at second. I mean, second. like, come on, man. Like, that's part of the whole strategy. And were you mad? No, you I knew. You just knew it was like, part of the game. Yeah, it was partly my fault because I put myself in that situation to get hit. Um, it's like the electronic strike zone right now, like er, what they're trying to do. It drives me absolutely nuts because that was the whole part of strategizing like your night that night was like, oh, dude, we got Laz Diaz behind the plate. Oh, dude, you better be, you know, you better really stay on the pitches on the corners, not so worried so much about up down. But hey, man, east west, you really got to have some plate awareness. Yeah, um, you know, and, and then you have guys that, that's how you plan your strategy of pitching that night. Like the catcher's new and the pitcher's new, but now we got like this electronic thing and it's going to call. So there's no, um, they're, they're just taking all this human element out of it where uh, the human element like is what makes athletes athletes and it's what makes us watch the games, you know? Uh, so I don't know. It's just a lot of weird stuff going on, but you know. I'm not a totally opposed. So I don't like it 100%. The what? The robo ump. No, not a big I, fan. I don't want that. But I don't mind the challenge part of it. I got no. to, I got to see it in Sacramento with, with Gamboa. And it was pretty quick. They do it fast. And I think you only get a few for a game. It's like three or something. Yeah, it's for the game, though. So it's <coughs> – I think they used it twice. It was within five, ten seconds and back to play. And, and one worked the walk. I do dig, like, you know, they have to make some changes. Like and, and At first, I wasn't a big – you know, I wasn't overly excited about the the, sh the pitch clock, right? Um, but after, like, you know, talking to my buddies that are pro scouts and they're out watching rookie ball and those games can be anywhere between four and a half to five hours and, <laughs> like, they're ripping through them in, like, 240, you know? So I, I can see how it most definitely is increasing the pace of play. It's, it's speeding the game up 100%. Now, you get to the playoffs and they want to give guys a little bit more time, breathing room to kind of come to your, your thoughts and, 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 you know, process your bat a little bit or process the pitch you're going to make, then I'm all for it. But, um, you know, at first I wasn't a big fan, but you know, I'm, I don't mind it really. Um, and honestly, dude, if, if you got 15 seconds, if you can't get, yeah. And they want to call a strike on you, just wear it, dude. Don't argue about it. Just wear it, dude. Like, you know, you don't throw the pitch in that time. Just wear it. Yeah. Take no, I think the, the only thing that would, I get frustrated when a batter's not in, but the pitcher's not even on the bump. Right, right. right. He ain't ready and then to the go batter either. gets the in strike. trouble for right. it. It's like, wait, he's not even. I know how much time I get, but he hasn't even stepped on the mound yet. Like, man, there's like, man, it, there's no way you're gonna make this game like it's not gonna be perfect. Like, you're not gonna appease everybody, and it, it's just give and take, man. You, you got to give a little bit and take a little bit and give. A little, so, just it's gotten better in some ways, but. You know, there's some other ways, the traditional, like, you know, some of the old school kind of baseball thought, I think they've kind of pulled out of it, uh, unfortunately. But, hey, man, everything changes, I guess, you know. No, and I think I think you're seeing uh, – nobody's really talking about pitch clock anymore. I think everybody's kind of coming around to accepting it. It hasn't been awful. I've seen a couple. I've been to a couple games where it's like, you know, it's not, I just don't want to see it end a game. I'd hate to see it end a game, you know, on a strike three. or so, I mean, that would suck, or a walk. That would, you know, with bases loaded or something like that would drive me crazy. Um, I think we do need to bring back taking get, taking runners out, taking the taking players out, home plate, second base. Let them go. Fuck yeah, yeah like dude. Chase Utley. Hey man, like that's that was, hard. That was that was so. You know how much I wasn't even a fast runner when I got on first base. I was looking at the shortstop and second base, and who who the fuck am I going to kill right now? That right. that was my. I knew I wasn't going to be safe. But my job was to not allow them. Somebody to needed my... to be safe. Exactly, right. exactly. And that was my job. And when I was coming around third base on a base hit to the outfield, I'm going to fuck that motherfucker up at home if I have to. You know, that, that's, it, that was fun. Like, oh, I'm out by 10 feet. Let me just stop and let him tag me out. Yeah, what don't I get that? Because if I got to second base, 
And I would, I mean, I'd want to, but if I, I that was when I was coming out, like here's the pinch runner because your ass ain't scoring on a base hit. Yeah. yeah. So get to second base. So yeah, I get that. But that, that just made it, that it. made it more fun. Like you want to like score, like, I don't know. It just takes the part of like your hustle. Like you know? the, the Mets, I mean, that used to be, the Mets used to give out shirts. So it was like the double play buster. If you blew up a double play, you got a shirt at the end of the day. It was, it was just something that teams took pride in. Um, and I'm not saying like you're know, rounding third. I was like, hey, how, how can I like this catcher up? <laughs> that, you know, the idea was to be safe. Now, if that guy happened to get between me and home plate, yeah, man, and he's gonna get run. He get run over, dude. That's or maybe it goes backwards. Man, I got yeah. the uh, the brunt of it. But you know, you're you're taking like moments of the game where you know turning a double play like where that dude's bearing down on you and you're having to throw and get up in the air to avoid the contact to, just to turn the double play like dude that takes away like athleticism as a shortstop now there's guys that used to not be able to play in the middle of the diamond because they could not turn a double play with with pressure or heat on them that's why they went to third base or they had to go to the outfield because hey man they didn't like getting hit at second base uh yeah, I don't like know. Those what, are the what things could have been I, yes. a double play. Just usually now a for sure double play. The Buster yeah. Posey unless you drop the ball joke, or something. Yes, the Buster Posey rolled the music joke. Like, That's like the Tom Brady play of baseball. Yeah, I you mean, know what I mean. I get when it. When that like, happened, they're vul- He's vulnerable, but you know he also put himself in that position. Like he could have set himself up differently. Where when he took that impact of that that collision, it would have kicked him back and not on his side, where it was able to roll up his foot, but. Um, hey man, you know it's he happened to be a superstar, and <clears throat> that's what happens when the superstars get be, beat up a little bit. I and I'm a fan of Buster Posey, but I agree. I am too. I just I thought that that was um, I don't know. You're just taking you're taking a lot of you're taking pieces of the game out that um, it was fun fun yeah, to it, watch. It provided like there was a, a sense of toughness about it. You know, uh, just look at some of those old school clips where guys are going into second base. Like I die <laughs> laughing. Didn't, didn't uh, P Rose in somebody in an All Star game? Wasn't it P Rose? Or, yep. I'm trying to play. Was home play. I forget who the catcher was, it but was, um, like ended his career. And but he didn't Buck care. Mar- he said it was part of the game. Was it oh, Buck Martinez? Was it? No, I don't think so. I it was don't like remember. Jack. I don't know. It was, uh, I forget who it was. Somebody but there's that one with know. there's Tennis. that one with who somebody took out Ozzy Smith at, and then him in the. It was Cardinals. <laughs> it was yeah. like Albert Bell. They just started going. They just start going. It was, no, it who was did Albert Giants Bell? and Cardinals. Was it and Will Clark? Will Clark's then his second. It was like very similar to the Tim Anderson deal where a Kendo hit, tagged him on his yeah. helmet, and Clark got pissed and smoked the Kendo. I remember, I was in, I, I remember and that. And then Ozzy went in. Yeah, I was in my, we were in my dad's truck. We used to listen to the games on the radio, man. I remember my dad pulling over. Like, he's just so fired up because <laughs> Candy Maldonado came out of the dugout and laid out Ozzy Smith. It was just, it was interesting back Who then. did Albert Bell truck? Was it, was it Vania? Yeah, Vania. Jose Vania. Vania. Oh, he laid him out. That was <laughs> like, you didn't even get the second base. No, he was just going to tag him out. The, the, the best is when he got hit uh, he and, and didn't want to go to first base. That's one of my favorite clips. I think Chan Ho Park hit him or just something the toughness those guys back you know it, and there's no contact guys get hit nobody fights anymore it's just but i think that's the 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 brass right i, I mean know. i don't know if players i don't know but they they talk about wanting the game to be exciting how exciting is it knowing that there's a guy on second base and if there's a base hit there's going to be an exciting play at the plate they don't want to lose no, their no. stars or if there's a runner on first and there's a double play ball there's what stars I'm just saying they what don't want to lose. What stars do we have? Nobody's, nobody's. You're paying Trey Turner three hundred million dollars. They don't want to lose Trey Turner. Then don't pay these guys. Hey, that's but a whole could, other topic. But you could say that about the pitching too. Like they're like one, Correa, they're one like, pitch they away from blowing their arm out. Okay, yeah. well they don't. We're not going to throw hard now. No man, that's dude. That's why you, the, nobody's career is. Sick. I'm not you disagreeing. I mean? I'm just pointing um, out yeah. the fact that no, they're, know, they're invested and these people, these players, sell tickets. So going back to the exciting thing, I don't know if you guys were watching. I, I kept rewinding that fight right so like the crowd if you listen to the crowd right there it was funny you know the play happens the crowd's like <sighs> and then all of a sudden like there's a little altercation it's like gets a little louder it's like <sighs> and then as soon as the umpire stepped back dude then the the crowd went bananas i thought it was just you know if you're talking about the excitement <laughs> like of, they're fight. gonna yeah. let that fly dude the crowd went absolutely ape shit just <sighs> <sighs> well can you name a home run that was hit that night no what went viral was the fight Exactly. Not the bat. Not somebody's bat flip or no. play. Like I don't know. I couldn't tell you what happened other than that that night. That's what everybody was tweeting, putting on Instagram. 
I think you're right. I mean, I I liked it. I want I want to see that intensity. Yeah, I'm fine. I mean, yeah, and like fighting's part of the game, dude. It, it really is. Like you know, especially when somebody's showing you up or somebody did something that was say you took somebody out at second base and it was a cheap slide. Hey, man, you're probably going to get drilled your next at bat or the next right. dude in the body. It, it's the toughness thing. I, I, I mean, for me, that's the biggest thing. Well, like I just saw toughness. one. I, I, I don't know. If it was a call or like a summer league thing or. Uh, I can't even make contact with these dudes. The hell it's was it? rules, man. It's like it's super soft. Man. I don't know if this was summer or what, but. This kid, this this guy hits a bomb and the catcher's oh, yeah. like. Move your ass, dude. I love this. Get the fuck to you know, run the bases. Like yeah, like I, McCann stopping Carlos Gomez at home before plate. even got to home plate. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I remember playing against Carlos, but like you can't have a pro. Like you gotta be. That's got to be okay, right? Like if the bat flips are okay, that can't. Like if that's you're gonna show be okay. him up, I can freaking right. show you up, right? I can get in your ass. What what's a teammate supposed to do? Should I cheer? Should I cheer well, with you? Well, it's not like what we're seeing in little league. We're still seeing high fives when your pitcher gets cranked. <laughs> like it's got to stop, dude. I had to tell a kid in summer ball like we're playing. We're playing the SoCal Birds, <clears throat> and this dude's wanted. on second base, and he's like <laughs> telling this. He's tipping the pitches, and I'm like losing my shit in the dugout. Like I'm just like furious. I'm yelling at my catcher, "Go talk to him. Change the signs, right?" So finally, I just call time. I go to the mountain. I just—I don't even talk on my pitcher. I look at the deal in second. I'm like, "Hey, bud, unless you want to wear one in an ear hole, you're gonna stop giving your hitter signs, man. Like, don't do that. That's chicken shit baseball, buddy. People get hurt when you do that, but they don't understand. Like, it's just—it's okay to him. You think his coach said anything to him? No, he didn't. He just laughed about it like it was like, oh, ha ha. No, man. People get hurt for doing stupid shit like that. That's, that's just like. It's like one of those unwritten rules, man. It's like mm-hmm. somebody's going to sit there and putt, and you walk in this line of putting. Like, that's not in the rule books. You're right. Definitely. It's etiquette, not a rule, though. But it's an the etiquette, etiquette thing. thing. It's yeah. just, it's, yeah, doing what's right. You know, just don't do that shit. And if you do do it, be prepared for something to happen. Or just be better at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, hey, man, like, stop have a this. Coach P would always say, be like, well, stop giving it to me. Period. You don't like it? Well, stop giving it to me, dude. I'm, if As long as you're going to give it to me, I'm going to take it. Um, so, and that's what the beauty of picking signs was. And, 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 oh man, just like a lot of the little parts of the, I mean, you ask a kid how to pick signs today. Nobody picks signs. You gotta, you gotta know numbers code, like Morse code, two, four, seven. Like, oh, what was that one? Oh, add two minus one. Okay, it's a three. You know, like, it's just, I don't know, man. We're not making the, these kids aren't having to think the game anymore. But I mean, in the big leagues, they, they've got a, a, a hearing deal. Like, you know what I mean? They're not even doing that in the big leagues anymore. Like the kids in high school with the numbers, I didn't like it when I like I saw it by what, 10, 12 years ago. I'm like, what the hell is this? And then I realized, like, you know, not to be, you know, too disrespectful, but some of the kids They're dumb. They're dumb. No, they are. Like it's it's kind of dummy. It. It's it's not dummy like foolproof, but it's when I was in high school, my coach had like 30 signs. Right. Uh, which you had to know. Just I mean, if you were gonna play, you better know. Them. Yeah. But like now it's just it was it's been bad. Like we've had to make over the years just dummy dangs down. And I, I, I don't know what why that is. We just it is what it is. We're trying to win games. You know, we're trying to control everything. We can't miss five signs, so what do we gotta do to make it where we you know, easier? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's I, I wish they did that at work. They made it easy for everybody. <laughs> just do work crappy and they adjusted to you, but Hey, even even work. worse than Tim Anderson. I, we don't have to spend any much time on it, but I don't know if you guys saw. It was I think this was last week. The uh, the announcer, one of the broadcast announcers for the Orioles, uh, get put on leave for basically speaking the truth about the Orioles. And you're finally in first place. You're finally playing really well. The guy basically told a bunch of facts about how bad they'd played in in Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. And uh, the next day, he was put on leave. Uh, he is back in the booth. It's not Kevin Brown, the the pitcher. No, Kevin Brown. young kid, young kid, Kevin Brown. Uh, he is back in the booth for those that may not have uh, researched. Society, man. But he's it's been an a, Orioles guy or raised Orioles, and he was just talking about how they never they hadn't won a series in so many years. They've just played poorly in Tampa. All facts posted yeah. the number by the the next day. He was out of the booth because they weren't happy with how he had super acknowledged sensitive. that the Royal uh, Orioles weren't very good for a long time. Super sensitive. They, you know, now that they're not zero, I think the second best record in baseball, by the way. They're my pick. 
Who, the Orioles? I hope. I hope. I don't I mean, I haven't watched a baseball game. And no, no hope. You got to believe, Jeff. Well, they've been... We got to believe. They've been I'm, picking... They've been picking at the top of the draft a few years, and they've been hitting on some good ones. And, um, you know, Tampa did it for years and when they when they were picking up at the top. And just that's the cycles you go through, you know. You, you, if you're fortunate enough to be picking, and I say fortunate enough, but if you're a top three pick, if you're getting a top three pick, you know, five, six, seven years in a row, dude. I mean, <laughs> at some point, you got to. You, you better, you know, you got to be hitting on them. So now, you know, they're hitting on them. And, and the Orioles, they went through a little transition. They brought Mike Elias over and uh, from Houston, when, where they had some, a lot of su- success there. And they're seeing some, some of the same things going on in Baltimore right now. So, yeah, they are one of the, they are playing really well. A lot of those younger talents up there, their pitching has been good. Their offense has been, you know, really good. So, yeah, man. And a tough division, too. It's not a, not a, yeah, absolutely. The one in the, in, no, not not a fluke because I mean they've been leading the the East for a while now. Or within, yep. I, mean, I think they fell back from Tampa just for a minute and then you know regained the. Who knows if the Jackson, front Jackson spot. Holiday stays on this territory? That's what I saw, man. Was just so, killing it in Double A. Yeah, the kids just super advanced, and I was, you know, I was just down at Area Codes and I got to see the younger brother, and you know, um, Scott Kidd. They say the, he's going to be better. He's better. He, 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 he's bigger, uh, at this moment, like just the plate awareness, the swings he was taking, um, the way he handled his at bats. I mean, uh, Billy Bean told a couple of their scouts, you know, cause being around Matt holiday and watching those kids at the ballpark, he said, those two boys are the best baseball players he's ever seen. You know, I should probably shouldn't be quoting Billy Bean here, but, um, but that's what, one of the other, by all means, one of the yeah, yeah, you pull that one out because he looks like Fabio. He doesn't. Yeah. If he's not a good hitter, why didn't he hit good? You could pull that one out. But yeah, he said that those two boys are the best, like little kids that he ever watched at the ballpark. They're just playing baseball every single day, and and that's what you get. You know, it's similar to the Upton brothers. Uh, so we'll see how these holiday boys. A little pedigree there. Yeah, you they're, know, they're pretty solid. Good genes. The other thing I saw, and this was just me, I thought it was interesting because I, I don't think we've ever even talked about this, Roth. Uh, I don't know what uh, Instagram account I saw from, but it was talking about like nasty habits or rituals or something of that along that line from uh, from big leaguers. So, and then they gave me, they posted like five. So I was just going to read those five. One, uh, Jorge Posada, uh, which I've heard this before. Actually, uh, Sean Hanna told me uh, Fernando Rodney used to do uh, this same thing. Uh, would pee on his hands during spring training to toughen up his hands. That's every hit. Or like feet. I, I've I've heard that a bunch of times. But I, I remember Sean Hanna telling me a story about Fernando Rodney. It toughens your hands from the calluses. Yeah, and, and you're you 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 you're back. I never peed on my hands. Well, no, no? I <laughs> never. No, well, I never did it either, Chad. <laughs> Not on purpose. No. <laughs> Never all peed the time. on my hands not to toughen them up, dude. Just take a couple just, extra swings in the cage. I just heard the acid. I just heard the acid. I don't know. <laughs> Sleep. I never did it. Sleep A. Lou was one of, uh, with the Giants. No, the I, I mean, it's a... Moises uh, did it. I yeah, I've heard, I've heard a lot of stories of, of that happening. I told all my players to do it. No, <laughs> they have coached. There you go. Uh, the other one was Bo Jackson. Uh, let's see. Created his own improvised clubhouse range and practiced archery for every game, before every game. Uh, was one thing. He did Tim Wakefield... Uh, ate a pound of spaghetti before every start. Roger Clemens. Now, I don't know if this is true. Uh, put Icy Hot on his genitals so no that he could shot. never be comfortable on the mound. No shot. I don't know about that. I wouldn't do that one either. I mean, I don't even know if that's true you necessarily. Shit, my pants you just accidentally rub a little bit on. You'd be <laughs> bouncing around in your fucking cup, dude. Like, that was no fun. So I was thinking, well, you know, this is better. no better time than now to ask. Did you have a ritual... Or a pre-game routine, or something you did prior to an AB, like Nomar had his OCD thing. Yeah, he, like, I mean, not before you, because I, I know they're superstition, but not superstitious. Something other than that. Well, I used to sprint to home plate, which was like I caught a lot of grief for it. I did that in '03. So when the year I signed, so I signed '01. So that next next year, halfway through the year, like. I don't know. I was in Clinton, Iowa, dude. It was just, we weren't playing in front of nobody. It was like, you know, I'll spice some shit up here. So I, I ran to the plate and I don't know that game. I think I had four or five at bats. I had a pretty good game, hit the ball hard. And I said, ah, oh, fuck, I guess I'll keep doing it. So I did it again. And then all of a sudden I got known throughout the league as the guy that ran to the plate. So everybody would kind of stop and watch and they'd all chuckle. And I got made fun of like no other, but you know what, dude, I, I didn't really care uh, until I got put on the roster 
and I got a phone call, and I'm not going to say he called me, but he called me, and he was a coach on the staff, and he just said, hey, man, um, you know, I heard about you know, your little routine or whatever you do before you hit, and he goes, you might want to keep that in your pocket until you, know, you actually establish yourself. Then you can do whatever you want. And, um, I look back on it, and I kind of wish I hadn't have changed. Like That was kind of what made me go, um, but I did just – Falling into the suit that I didn't want to hear a bunch of shit or, or, or you know, get thrown at every other at bat. Reason. Yeah, so I, I shut that down. But, yeah, I mean, I, I you do different things. Like, I, I saw a lot of guys do different things. I played with a guy that he wouldn't he wouldn't walk or step over any line in the dugout. Alabama, uh, Alejandro Machado, we played together in AA. Like, he'd come in the dugout, and if the dugout was cracked, he would tiptoe all over this dugout because he didn't want to step on any line. It was, like, the most – it was – really weird he had to put his glove a certain way facing a certain way in the dugout it was like a, a little too much it was a little voodoo ish yeah, yeah it was kind of like it was waiting for the chicken bones to come out on the <laughs> bat you know like but uh yeah man everybody has their own little routine some guys are a lot more a lot quirkier than others um <clears throat> joe McEwing had a funky little i i just saw joe uh he's coaching with the with the cardinals but he had a funky like little routine he did prior to getting in the box um just yeah guys had different things and and everything you know when guys are doing things that they do it for a reason it's not just to to say hey i want to be on sports center tonight because they might show me they, they do it to to get themselves most of the time mentally prepared it's not so much physically you're always physically pretty pretty well tuned but mentally is where you really got to try to stay sharp and, and that's what a routine does it allows you to stay sharp not just physically but mentally more so so i could say like and I don't know why, if it was a calming thing or I just felt more comfortable or relaxed, but I always used to, like, stretch in the, the on-deck circle. Mm -hmm. Like, arms, shoulders, wrists. I don't, like, I don't know why. And I had to do the same. I just had to do it. And that's what made me feel comfortable. That was one. Um, what else? I mean, uh, oh, catch partner, but is that superstitious? Yes and no, <clears throat> until your catch partner gets moved up to the big leagues. Or <laughs> yeah, well, see, I, don't, I, I never had to worry it. about that part, but in high school, I had the same catch partner. Yeah, prospects always first two guys thrown usually. Okay. That's, that's <laughs> one thing I picked up, just watching. And I, I will say to that to those listening, uh, my senior year, the one the one day, and I don't know why, and that's, it's probably for me to blame, that I didn't play catch with my catch partner, uh, we lost our first round of the playoffs. There you go. Can't change. There you go. You and uh, even same. oddly enough, my catch partner and I had the same birthday. Just a little known fact there. Uh, Roth, did you had any? Do you have any? I mean, everybody avoids the chalk line, like shit, like that. But that's superstitious, right? Yeah, I always. Obviously, I put my uniform on the same every single day. Mm -hmm. um, same foot first. See, that's uh, not something that I think would happen now. At least at the younger age, I think that's. I was like that too. Like it was left sock, right sock, sliders. Everything jock, was left, left foot first. Uh, I played with, I don't know if you guys remember Brandon Larson, LSU, third baseman, 16th pick overall. He was like, he, he, he was random. He had no routine. Like it was just whatever Lars did that day. And usually there'd be like the lost and found pile. You know, it'd be like old sliding shorts or mismatched socks. Did he would wear the most random stuff. He'd walk <laughs> over, he'd grab a pair of sliding shorts and he'd, crumble them up and he'd he'd take a deep breath of them dude it was like the most hilarious thing you could watch you watch this guy and like sometimes they might be some that just stayed on the floor you know they just threw them in the pile and they stunk and he'd no. make this nasty face no. and all of a sudden he'd shrug his shoulders and he'd put them on anyways it was just no. it was just this nasty individual it was just hilarious watching this guy get himself prepared to play games but i did have to have the box clean like when i went up to the plate I like had no cleat marks. No cleat thing? marks. Yeah. I, they had to be my cleat marks. So, and I did that almost after every pitch. I would clean it, and then I would always do my my gloves. I'd re redo my gloves every time. Was it yeah. habit or was it something that I think it it got to the point where I didn't even know it was happening. It was just happening. It. Second like, nature. That's just my thing. Yeah. So. And then I would do the bat waggle before the pitch is always the same. Did you guys have anything that you would cue on? Like, obviously, people were picking up something. I mean, I remember seeing stuff like Augurito would talk about, you know, finding the bill of the cap or, you know, the logo on the hat or. Uh, well, I mean, that's probably <clears throat> if like you're looking at like, you know, on deck circle, you're, you're obviously gauging like 
the tempo of his delivery and how he's getting down the mound, how quickly he is, you know, how you're going to have to get, but probably like the biggest thing for me was just trying to pick up like where I was going to be, where, where, where at on this dude's head. Am I going to be trying to focus on to, to pick that ball right. up? Or is it somebody that's going to show it to me early and I can track it the whole way. And always the guys that seemed more difficult were the guys that could hide that ball. Cause then boom, now it's, your, it's on slot you. was, yeah, right. you just, you know, I thought Liriano was, was a guy that really did that well. Um, and when you're 94, 96 from the left side and you hide the ball, Hey man, like it's tough. Yeah. So it's tough. Uh, <clears throat> but being able to track at those guys with those real long arms, like a Mike Pelfrey, uh, I remember I always swung the bat well off him, even though he was throwing 93, 95 with some sink, but he was, is a trackable arm. Um, we say that a lot too. When you go watch a guy like, Hey, this guy really hides it, keeps it behind the hip. It's a shorter compact, more arm action. Um, or you go, Hey, this guy really stretches out. It's lengthy, uh, around the corner. It's trackable. So those are kind of things, you know, continue to watch yeah it's just like watching the game i mean i tell guys this all the time like when you're a player you're essentially scouting like you know who the good players are the guys that can make the backhand plays the guy you can bunt on the guy that's going to track down that ball in right center field the guy that you can take the extra base on because he doesn't have a 50 arm um so you're doing all that as a player already yeah i was thinking too like on deck circle like there's another thing we've never really touched on is the job of an on deck hitter like there's a lot of things that you need to be aware of one, you know, who's on base, where they're at, absolutely, where the, you know, the defense is playing as well. Cause on a ball in the gap, you know, who you need to stand up or who you need to slide, mm -hmm. uh, get the bat out of the way. You've got to, you know, is there a runner at first? If this guy walks and no outs, do I need to be ready to sack bunt drag bunt? Um, there's on top of picking up release point and timing, like there's about eight, nine jobs you could figure out in on deck circle. Like it's not just stand out there and wait till the next guy's on or out and go hit. No, you're constantly like every pitch. There's there's something that you can be processing in your brain. Like, um, and I tell a lot of kids this. Like, you know, we're gonna start up scout ball here in the next couple of weeks. So, um, well, actually next weekend already. So, uh, but those are the kind of things like you want to talk that that I try to talk to them about. It's not so hey, just roll the balls out. Let's play a game. See what like, you got. See what you guys are. No, right. let's like talk to you about how uh, you can put yourself in better positions. You can think about situations before they're happening. I think that's I don't know, you know just. That's what I try to do when I do the scout ball stuff is to try to start getting more, what do you say, coaching moments in yeah. there, teaching moments right. as opposed to just performing moments. Um, I know from from my development, like practice was huge. Like I made massive strides in practice, primarily on the defensive side. Like the hitting stuff, yes, the hitting was making adjustments, but it wasn't. I wasn't a good hitter because I hit more. I, I felt like I was a better hitter because. I understood what I was trying to do in the box. It wasn't just like one track mind. Like I wanted to do things from pole to pole as opposed to just one dimensional, um, you know, and yeah, all those reps don't equate to hits. No. And you know, I, I was, I was looking up my numbers the other night <clears throat> just to, I wanted to see like what my K rate was. And cause I'm looking at all these, that's like the first thing I do when I look at these prospects anymore is, Hey, I heard this guy's hitting the ball. Well, well, cool. He's hitting two ninety and, high A or low A. Well, dude, that's the first thing I scroll to is, is the strikeouts and plate appearances. So, I mean, man, if you're in the 30s or 40s, dude, you're going to have your work cut out for you as you keep going up. Like, But if you can maintain in the 20s or, or the low teens, like you have a legitimate shot of potentially playing in the big leagues just because how much cr contact you're creating, you're putting balls in play. It's that many more opportunities to to get hits, to, to hit the double, to hit the, the home run. But my first year, I had 500, and I think it was like 598 at bats, dude. I struck out, <clears throat> shit, 73 at bats. So like 13%. Dude, it's almost tripled for some of these guys in low A. 39% as opposed to 13%. Like even in college, I think I struck out 11% of the time and 299 at bats. You know, I think it was 30 some strikeouts or whatnot, 35, whatever it was. But. The more you're putting the ball in play, the, the more opportunity you have for things to happen. And the more you understand, like, what you're trying to do in the box and how you're trying to make your move or what part of the baseball you're trying to hit, it's going to open up doors or it's going to close a lot of doors. And the, the more creativity you have in your mind to put yourself in positions to hit and, and not just be sitting up there looking for that little cookie fastball in. No, man, he throws me something away. I got a big hole on the right side. I'm just going to hit me a little right. base knock to the right, right side. Just It's instinctively, too. Like, it's not just something that you you can do man like it's something you think about like the good hitters are always thinking man look at look at how much jd martinez dissects what he does it's not just pitch to pitch or at bat to bat it's swing to swing man move to move and it's very 
um, what do you say? It's detailed, man. It's why did I make that move? Why did I go here? Ooh, if I had kept my front hip in two inches closer, closed, I, I would have hit that ball another five, six miles an hour harder. So, I mean, dude, good hitters think about being good hitters, man. It's not just something that God blesses them with. Well, and the approach uh, isn't to just leave the yard. Like it's what, what am, what am I getting right here? The approach. That's like, the are they giving me a gap, too, man? Yeah. Like, where do we talk about these kids about approach? We don't. Hey, get in the box, swing hard, hit the ball. I don't know what it is anymore. There isn't one. I know what I know what we always thought it was or what we taught it was. Right. It's not that anymore. No. Like it's so Definitely. I don't I wouldn't even know where to start because there's so many been bad bad habits in my opinion created. Like and some of these guys it's it's kind of too late to go back and fix as as some of them. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. You get kids that are hitting the same way and in high school, they're trying to figure out, well, why am I not? Well, it's because you've been doing it the wrong way yeah. for four years. I can't I can't go back and, and replace all of those reps no. that you've created now into habit. Like, and you just said the, the habit, like the more you keep making bad moves, like that's you're just muscle memory in your body, man. Like now that's the first move you're going to make is and, and the more you keep doing it improperly, it's just going to carry over. And now your performance is going to be staggered. Um, as opposed to having a really consistent even and even going like further in that like you said something about kids earlier talking like i don't know, chasing the carrot for the summer like playing yeah the fomo like, everybody's a fomo kid now i was thinking you know if you're a guy that is worried about whatever rankings they give or what tournament you're going to this weekend or in two months because it's some high profile or what travel and what this travel coach said. Like if you're thinking about that or concerned with that or fixated on that and you're, and, but yet you're not even listening to your high school coach, you're listening to everything. And, but that you can have like problems, big problems. Like, I don't know if you're listening to everybody outside of your high school coach, more than your high school coach, I guess is what right. I'm trying to say. Like, uh, cause I've seen that I've seen like, Oh, well, who, who told you that this guy? I'm like, I don't even know who that is. Who is that? Right. You know, and I'm like, do you know, they're not calling, Fresno State, Ovi's not calling that guy. You know what I mean? Ovi's calling me or, or your head coach. Like, oh, he's not calling that guy. See, that's the talk we just had with the, the kids, too, is, uh, you know, I say chasing the, that the, they, they dangle that carrot out there. Oh, you got to come get ranked or you got to play on this team. You have to be at this showcase. It's just massive fear of missing out. Like the it's we're in the FOMO. Everybody's got the FOMO but for the player or for the organ. They're they're no, trying I'm to saying create like FOMO. Parents and players primarily, and, and it's the parents. They always feel like they're missing out if their kid doesn't go to an event. Like I had to remind the area code kids. I just asked them. I said, "Hey, let me know. You know, raise your hand if you can tell me what pick Baseball America, PBR, NorCal, or Alpha Prime had in last year's draft. Like, tell me where'd they pick? They don't pick, but people line up to pay those people." So that they can get picked, but it's, they, it's they don't a, it's something pick. to brag about. I mean, it's no different yeah. than your commitment do, post. No, it's, it's the same kind of thing. It's just the fear of missing out, man. Like I'm saying, if you're if you're going to gonna listen to everybody, you, maybe you should listen to your high school coaches as well, you're, or give them the, pay them the same attention in mind that you would those other people. Fair well, enough. if you're good enough, word of mouth's going to get. But the out. problem is, you don't pay your high school coach. You're paying your travel. I get that. You're, you're paying. And You're we've had that conversation for on a here. service. No, for sure. You know, and well, and the reason I kind of bring that up is I was telling Chad, it's been a while. I had a former player ask me, we were talking about playing and the difference and the changes over the last 20 years, even from when I played. And he was like, what kind of player were you? And I gave some stupid answer. Um, but thinking about it again, it wasn't even, the answer doesn't matter. Like it should be, my answer should have been like, well, you should, the, the question you should have asked me, bud, was what did I get out of it? Like right. what did baseball give me? Right. You know, not what kind of player I was, because you could be the 25th guy on the roster and get more out of the game right. for your future than the best player on the fucking team. 100%. And I think that's one thing that's great about one, not just team sports, but baseball. I've seen plenty of guys go be really good, the best player on the team, go play college baseball, get drafted, do their thing, come back and be the biggest dickhead. Like nobody likes to do. Did, right. Obviously, he was a me guy, like didn't learn anything about nothing. Um, so you, you could be that guy. You could be legit and not get anything out of the game. And that's sad. That's a shame. That's what we try to prevent as coaches. Right. right. And I, I don't know if I've been just seeing it more. I've been out of the game a couple of years, so that's why I like you know bringing you in to talk about that stuff, like doing area codes. A lot and, of what I say, yeah, it's, it's just hard, man, because 
I see it year in, year out. This will be year 10, man. This is my 10th draft, man. That's 10 draft classes. I've seen guys come through whose careers are now over uh, that I scouted 10 years ago, and there's guys that are still playing. Um, it, it's just it, you're constantly learning. There's there's constantly things going on that, that you, you need to be aware of and not fall, how do I say it, like, you can do too much, man. Like if people, if more people focused on the practice side of it and, and less like having to run down a tournament or go to a showcase and actually like focused on their craft, they become better players, which will help them in the long run. But we're in a, we want the now right now. Like yeah. we want the future now. Uh, you know, look at the velocity. Everybody's you know, so excited about throwing hard. Well, man, throwing hard, something that kids are going to eventually get to just having a good throwing program and, and if you're on a, a proper weightlifting uh program that's going to allow you to throw hard it's not because you just show up and throw a bullpen with one dude um that, that it's it's that's not what it's about man like throw strikes the velocity is going to come as your body keeps developing as you keep getting stronger and you mature like but we, we live in this now, now, now. And I mean, I'm guilty of it too. When I oh, roll of course. up to the I, yard, I pull my gun out. And that's the first thing I'm looking at is even velocity. In other things in your areas of your life, I'm right. guilty of the, the now syndrome thing. Well, and some guys just, you know, some guys are junior college players, you know, and there's nothing Not wrong at all. with that. Nope. And, and we live in this little stigma where people are like way, it, it's like I see on Twitter all the time. They're announcing these, these smaller school commitments. Okay, well, that's great. But you're going to go to this smaller school. And you're going to sit for two years when you can go to a junior college and play for two years. And that small school that wanted you that you're going to go sit at for two years, they're going to beg you to come in and start right away over that high school guy that they especially brought in. in today. It happens all the time, man. <clears throat> Even more so now with, like I said, with the roster sizes and COVID kids yes. still playing. But the travel ball guy is like, oh, this is so great. He's going to Missouri Wesleyan. What? Like, where is that school? I've never heard of it. What division is that? But, it, oh, by the way, you're going to pay 20000 in tuition to go some small-ass school. Like, it makes no sense to me. But it goes back to, hey, man, look at the, the, the I'm lanyard. Committed look at the it. lanyard I'm wearing. Look at my Facebook or my, my Twitter post. Like, I'm, I'm blessed to announce that you're going to Dartmouth, M Missouri, a Valley Christian. Like, nobody's ever heard of that school. Like... Is that really good for your baseball future? You told me you want to play in the big leagues. How many big leaguers went there? Oh, none. Oh, you're going to go there and perform and go to LSU. Be the first. Okay, good luck. I, I wish you luck, but that's not realistic. Be realistic. Like your skill set's your skill set, man. And how you embrace that and how you further it and, and, and improve it is up to you. It's, I think you've got a better chance with that mindset and mentality yeah. than the other. Yes. Now, you know, and I see it every single year, dude. If it, listen, every year. If you're looking past anything, you're already you're already down in the count. Look at if you're looking past the city or, or Reedley or any COS, if you're looking past the JUCO, yes. you're already down in the count. I, you're already thinking wrong. Yes. Like, you, you have to sometimes embrace, like, your skill set and run with it, man. Like, and, How and, many guys and, are there? Now? You're a JUCO product. You know, I'll just, I'm a product of a JUCO, 100%, man. And I could have been that kid that walked on at Fresno State out of high school, but that wouldn't have helped my development. I wouldn't have gotten on the field sooner because I went to Fresno State. I probably would have got caught and not gone to class and not been mature enough on the, on the baseball diamond and off the baseball diamond to sit there like dude we've got kids that were conference player of the year going to to, to schools and they're coming home halfway through now, you're telling me dude you're the conference player of the year but you can't make it at the division one that you're going to which isn't even a power five it's a, a smaller right. west coast school and you're coming home already man like what that doesn't make sense to me. You haven't prepared yourself. Like you, you're actually, it's kind of embarrassing that you're going to a D one. You're the player of the year, but now you have to come home. Why? What, 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 what's something's not right there. You know, players of the year, they go off and they stay. And usually they, they contribute a little bit. their freshman year. They go do it again. Yeah. And, and you stick. Oh, and if you're not the best player, you, you know what? I'm going to work my ass off and I'm going to be the number one shortstop or I'm the number one center fielder or first base and whatever it is next year. Like, these people, everybody wants to roll in and I'm starting now. No, dude, it doesn't work like that. It's called earn your stripes, you know, and we see it every year. Guys go to school and I always hear, ah, coach didn't like me. Oh, he, he didn't like you. Okay, that's why he offered you a scholarship. He committed you early, but now you're home. Okay, no, no, no. That means you didn't hold their end of the bargain up and you're afraid to look in the mirror. I mean, that's. Well, the thing is, too, is that school still got a full roster. Yeah. <laughs> you man. know what I mean? Like not everybody else left. 
No, and you know, I don't, I don't, like, I'm just saying in general, whatever school it is, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, they're still going to be full, especially the D, the D ones. Yeah, and and honestly, man, the D one game right now is 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 scary. Like, it really is. Like I said, we're constantly in an upgrade industry. You might be a top prospect coming in, but all of a sudden, the second baseman at New Mexico State hit 25 bombs, and he wants to come to Arizona State. And he plays your position. Well, guess who coach is going to sign? The dude that hit 25 bombs. And yesterday, yes, you were our number one recruit. But, well, today, you're number two. So, um, But you could also look at it as like, all right, I'm the number one recruit. Now this guy's coming in. I'm going to go fight like hell. But yeah. at the very least, I'm going to learn something from yeah. this guy and this experience. It's going to make you a better player. Listen, it ends for everybody. <laughs> No, and it does. You don't play forever. The sooner these kids start embracing, like, struggling. Yes, competition and struggling. Because if if you tell me you're going to play pro ball, okay, well, that's great. Dude, you're going to struggle. And the competition is fucking real, man. More than you succeed. Yes, and you have to be tough. And you have to be willing to look in the mirror and be like, dude, I'm playing like shit right now. I need to step it up. Or, hey, man, I'm giving it all I got. I got to find a way to dig a little bit deeper. or, Or, you know, like... If you're shying away from the competition and competing for to to have, to have a starting shot, dude, you have no chance, dude. You have no chance, man. You have but not no only that. You know chance. what bugs the shit out of me is these guys want. To, I'm a shortstop, right? I'm, no, you're not. You can play every fucking you're a position. Baseball right. player. That's what you want to go in. If you can go in and be like, okay, I got this guy's better than me. But guess what? I might be better than the second baseman, the third baseman, first baseman. They're putting everybody what everywhere. If, yeah. What if a coach, you say, hey, coach, I'm a shortstop. But what if they needed a left fielder? Well, hey, I don't need a shortstop. I need a left fielder. Hey, I'm a left fielder, too. Dude, Frank Robinson you know asked what I'm me saying? if I ever played second base. You think I was going to tell him, no, I don't play second base? Yeah, <laughs> no. I don't play second base. I got out there. I'm looking around like, where the fuck am I at right now? I haven't been on this side of the diamond in a long time. So, man, you, I tell the kids, too, they come to, to scout ball. I got this little guy that. Um, he's starting to catch too. I've always liked this kid. He, he's he's small. He was he just reminded me a lot of myself. He was always the smallest dude on the team, but he was the toughest, grimiest little ball player. And now he's finally starting to sprout up. He's catching. He's playing a little short. Like he's gonna end up being a D one player. But that that like to me that kid's like the perfect example of the kid that's just the freaking grinder dude that that loves to play. And you know, in a couple of years, I'll be able to talk and say his name and stuff. But he's gonna be a really good little college player down the road. But it, it's just falls into the wasn't the biggest wasn't the fastest at 12 years old now he's 16 17 and his body's starting to mature and what used to be like the little dude on the team now he's becoming the team leader you know the guys are looking to him and it's fun to watch a kid like progress and and just stay stick to the course of of the whole concept of the process man it's a process it's not instant you know you're not getting instant results in this sport like it it is constantly a day in day out work 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 and and you got it you can't get too caught up in your successes and you can't get too low on your failures man you you got to find a way to stay even keel and that's like a ladder man that's what i you know it's like i talked to my kid uh, you know nick york you know when i do have a chance to talk to him not that he likes to talk very often but you know that's just what we talk about it's just staying consistent and controlling what he can control um, and understanding, like, dude, you're not going to get hit every at bat. I think right. that's what kills him because in his mind, he's that. That's how good hitters think, man. Like, you expect to get a hit every fucking time you put your toes in the box. Like, that's just how your mentality is. And when sometimes when you're hitting balls on the screw and guys are making plays, you know, they're making you earn your knocks, it becomes fucking so frustrating. And sometimes those emotions get the better half of you, and now it starts affecting your performance or affecting the way you are with your teammates. And that all takes away from from the vibe that you're trying to get and move forward and, and grow and become a better player. Um, so it's it's about a maturity thing, yeah. you know. You know, just growing up, maturing, and understand like what the important values of playing and, and being a good player is. Yeah, I was. I I mean, I struggled like any other kid with that type of processing, like not going back, not dwelling. Yeah. Um, and as a coach, I I remember just like I would use the analogy of like a ladder. Like if what I'm if what I want is at the top of the ladder. I got to keep moving forward on those steps. I can't go back a step to get at the top of the ladder. Absolutely. So you just got to get past each step and it's a just never ending ladder. Technically, you know what I mean? You never really get there, but uh, I think that's a no, great approach just, to it. Just say me too. Like I, 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 you know, this used to eat me up for years all the time, but like, man, I, yeah, everybody always tells, Oh, that was great. Dude. You got to the big leagues. Well, man, in my mind, I, I think I've said this on there before, but I failed. Like in my mind, I failed. 
like because I didn't play 10 years in the big leagues. Like, and that was the goal set out was like, dude, I want to play long enough where I never have to work again. Uh, and you look at, I look back and I'm like, everybody's like, oh, hey, that's great. You got to the big leagues. Yeah, but you just said it like, I got to the big leagues. No, man, when you play this game, like you want to stay in the big leagues. When, when you take that uniform off the last time, you want it to be a big league uniform. You don't want it to be the AAA freaking, you know, packing your bag in Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa, dude. Like, you want it to be in a big league stadium and guys coming up, hey, man, you got a hell of a career. That, that, that's how you think. That's how I thought of it. That's how I. So in my mind, like, yeah, I got there. I accomplished a goal, but it wasn't the ultimate goal that I wanted. The ultimate goal would have been like, yeah, 10 years in the big leagues yeah. or, you know, maybe sign a, 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 a nice contract or something. So, um, yeah, man, like you just <laughs> – it's constantly getting better, man. Just you got to constantly get better. It's no different than you guys in your jobs and, and my, me and mine. Like if I'm the same shitty, if I'm the same scout every year, like how am I really developing? Like, yeah, so there's some stuff that we're doing nowadays that, that, hey man, like they didn't have when I played. There were things that we didn't look at or, or I have to like invest time in those and learn those things. Otherwise I'm going to get caught left on the side. And now it's- you, And listen, you they're know. not all bad. I've used the example, my like my business. Like I, we've, we've got- a little automated no doubt we've got machines that help efficiency and uh lesser mistakes and and sure there's a, a lot of technology that does that brings yep. that so you know while while still using a human to operate it so correct you know we talked about with Thormer like analytics and feel like the separate like how much is you know finding that fine line of both but you know thinking about guys too that have you know i think I about think loop if you're going to use it like okay if for example like i was talking with the a director that I used to work for and we were talking about a player and he was watching this kid's at bat and he took a, you know, bases loaded, takes a three, two fastball right down the middle of the plate. No, no temp just takes it to the dugout. Like it was one of those like, Oh shit. I didn't think he was going to throw it. Right. So he tells me, I talked to this kid after the bat and he goes, well, you know, he flipped the script on me, you know, 64% of the time he throws a breaking ball right there. Okay. Well, is 64% that heavy of a scale to totally shit, shit can your bat on one pitch? To look not ready to, yeah, to like, take a swing? Now I get it if that, that data is, is significantly, if it's 94% of the time this guy throws a slider and he sneaks a fastball by you. I get it, dude. Okay, 90%. But we're, you're really going to miss out an opportunity to put a swing on a ball because over a 50-50? You're Almost, giving up like an 50, AB 50, yeah, yeah, man, for like, 60%. Yeah, dude. Like If I'm going to sell out on a number side, it's going to be heavily on one end. Uh, outside of that, man, that's where the human element was it comes a, in. Was dude. it a lefty or a righty? Left-handed hitter. So you know what a slider is going to do? Where would the fastball go? You know, Probably yeah. in again? I don't know, but... it. it at sixty percent. But I mean, if like, you're gonna I'm look at if you're gonna look at about on sixty percent. I guess my point is, don't look, just look at what right. percentage the slider's thrown. If he does go fastball, one, what's the percentage and where's the location? If it's right. a slider or fastball and they're both in, fuck what he's throwing. Be on time and be ready for something in. How about just battle, man? Like it might not just be break the your pitch bat. you're looking for, but foul it off. <laughs> yeah. Now you can get to that pitch that you're looking for too. Um, so it, it's just like there's a lot of different thoughts and philosophies about it. It's like same with the OPS. Like I get the OPS. It 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 it's slug it's power but how come there's no negative connotations that go on that how come you don't get dinged for punching out not making contact with the runner in scoring position uh, uh, you know it's weird you you hit a single and your ops goes down like how is that even possible it, it, it baffles me yeah. but you can strike out 200 times a year and your ops holds holds firm so um yeah there, there's going to be some kind of there are those thing. stupid stats what was it a yeah, couple years wild. ago with with war i think joey gallo had a higher war than freddie freeman did yeah, and he was I an mean, mvp I, <laughs> like make, make that make sense yeah and then you'll have guys that'll actually argue that joey gallo is a better player than freddie freeman you know based on a war number when yeah, the actual that. stats we know there. that's not true but um hey before we i know we, we always run through this always goes by so freaking fast um I don't think you've been playing. I asked you about it. So nope. Immaculate Grid. Nope. I don't so know what it is. Basically, it's on baseball it's reference. Right here too. You can look at this. There you go. Look at his screen. It's better. Mm -hmm. So you got. So today's grid. We, I haven't looked at it. Um, you're trying to pick a player. We got to find figure out a player from Twins, Phillies. That Braves, played on those two teams. Braves, Phillies. Braves. An all-star for the Phillies. Uh, Twins, Seattle Mariners, Braves, Mariners. Seattle All Star and then MVP for Twins Braves and then an All Star and MVP in the same season. That could be any team. That one. So uh, I don't. We know. always try to go with dogs first, so we can find. dogs. I usually think of dogs and uh, 
you want like a, an oddball name. You want a lower percentage. You want the lowest percentage possible. So if you only get nine guesses for nine slots, so that is another thing. You kind of have to be sure. You can't. Yeah, if you miss one, if you miss one, it's over, you can baby. still you answer in that slot, but you just get a less guess. Right. But you're trying to fill the grid and if without you, missing. If you miss a slot, whatever you end up with without, it's automatically a hundred percent. Gotcha. So obviously the Braves MVP. I I I mean um, right Acuna? off the bat is for me uh, Terry Pendleton. Are you, it's all time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Braves MVP. So, so then you just search. I'm gonna put Terry Pendleton. Is that you guys good with that? That's fine. Put right there. Seven percent. All right, and then uh, let's see. Braves Phillies. Braves Phillies MVP? No, 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 no. This, this is wins? just a player. No, just who played? Play? A this player who that, played for both teams. Player that played on both teams. So wow. the so these two go with these like this, mm. and then the one across is just for the team across. So you don't need an all star for these two teams. You just need an all star for, for the these Phillies. two. Okay. You need MVP for those two. See how it goes, left, right, down, and up. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Braves, Philly. Uh, the first one that came to mind was Craig Kimbrell, but Braves, Phillies. Yeah, I'm trying to think of other guys because you want a low percentage too. So some of those Braves guys back in the day, Steve Avery was he a Brave Philly? See, I don't know. That's the that's, thing. It's a great. You're, you're, that's, <laughs> that's what. So we you do. can you can go with guys like I'm sure Craig Kimbrell for sure. Kimbrell's yeah. on there. We can say that, but, but you don't want a, him. To it be might like be a 80%. higher percent. Yeah, it could be a high percentage. Let's just go Kimbrell. Twenty six percent, which isn't bad. No, uh, you, you want to be like Ovi got me hooked on this. So I listen. You want to be in the low teens. I I know I have a I have a Braves Seattle, and it's not fair because. Um, How's it not fair? You know, well, them. not not fair. I just so uh, a Brogdon a Mariner. Philly? No, 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 just a just a Philly. Dylan uh, Lee's not. No, he was with uh, the about Marlins. Taylor. Was it Chris Reitzma? Fister, Fister, Chris Fister, Chris, Chris Reitzma was a Brave Seattle. Now it's it's tied to uh, somebody close to my. Let's say extremely close to my fan. I don't want to name names 0. or situations. Zero nine percent. Really good for Chris Reitzma. Wow. So yeah, it's a family type of friend. Uh, that's not cheating. I know, but that's like if we knew Luplo was one. It's not cheating, you know, a guy. Which I've used Luplo probably like a three lot. or four times. I used Jason Wood the other day. He was zero point <laughs> zero one percent, which I think I might have been the only person to guess. Quite possible. Uh, yeah. So Twins, Twins, Phillies. I know Nelson Cruz, yeah. but I think he's high for the Phillies. He played for the Phillies. Oh no 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 Seattle Seattle Twins. Uh, I think Jim Tomey is one for I I, was Phillies. A Philly Philly, fan, yeah. but I'm I, that's got to be high. It's got to be a high percentage. And then he, like Ovi always tells me, he tries to go dogs first. That's what I do. And then he tries to go relief pitchers. So hey, I was thinking, wasn't uh, Ruthven? Doesn't Dick Ruthven a Ruthven Philly? Was a Philly? I don't know if he was a twin though. I don't remember. I don't. Danny know. Gladden was a twin, but I don't but, know. Uh, Gladden might be on there as a Philly. You think he played with the Phillies too? Once I know Ruthven was a Philly. I don't know. I know Gladden was a twin for sure. But Let's come back Philly? to that one. Let's uh, a Philly's all star. First one that came to mind was Lenny Dykstra, but we can go. We want to go kind of an odd name here. Yeah. What do you got, Lab? For a Philly all star, uh, you can say. I mean, Ryan Howard. No, 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 want, no big no, name. Want, we want. We want to go back. randoms, uh, randos. You want to go back in time. Like Darren Dalton, Lenny Dykstra. Yeah, you um, go uh, hold Jimmy Rollins. He for so sure was. About all those Jimmy guys. Rollins, Chase Elliott, Ryan Howard, oh, yeah, they'll be oh, high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Reese yeah, Hawkins who, will be high. Yeah. But who's an all-star that, that's not going to be high? Per I se. think Dykstra might be. Dykstra. Who else? I mean, Darren Dalton, the catcher, nobody really knows about him. You pick, Roth. We'll go with your name. Go ahead. Who, Dalton. You, you want to go Dalton? Yeah. Two percent. Damn, that's a good one. Yeah. All right. Uh, Twins. Seattle. I'm. I mean. I'm still on. Let's go MVPs and All Stars first. Okay. You want to go MVPs and All Stars? Yeah. So you want to go Mariners All Star? Mariners All Star. I'm gonna say Harold Reynolds. That's that might be legit. <laughs> Harold Reynolds. That might be. Harold's. He was All Star one year, huh? You think a lot of people know he was an All Star? Zanino was an All Star. Oh, that's a good one too, Mike Zanino. Um, Florida Gator. 
also. Uh, you go back to the when they were Lee, Buner, obviously Griffey. Yeah. yeah. Um, was Boone? Boone Brett Boone was also for sure. Yeah. Boone was legit. I'm gonna go Rand. I'm gonna go Harold Reynolds. I'm gonna take this. One. Harold. I'm oh, gonna yeah. take this one from you guys. I think that's a a really good one. Harold Reynolds. One percent. Harold sure. Reynolds. Um, okay, so now we're MVP. Twins MVP, and I can only think of two. Kirby Puckett. Was he? Was an, he though? Was he an MVP? That's the. That's the thing. That's a good guess though. I. But I, I was thinking. Kent the, Herbeck, Kirby Puckett. Uh, see, now he's going back. This is what we this, need, this bro. Because in my head, I got Joe Mauer and, 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 and Morneau. Was Dan Gladden? Yeah, Morneau. See, Dan Gladden, I know, Morneau, I don't know if he was I know both Mauer and Morneau were. Was Molitor an MVP for the Paul Twins? Paul Molitor, yeah. For the Twins, though? I bet he was. What are twins we doing? Labby, this is your pick. Well, he was Twins You're Brewers picking. Toronto. Oh, You're picking for us. Was Dave Winfield a twin? No. I don't think Dave Winfield was a twin. We can't look it up. You can't look it up. That's the point. We can't look it up. See? It's hard. You can go with the for sure. I know Morneau and, and Maurer were. Yes. I know that. Yeah. Or MVPs are all stars. Oh, MVPs. MVP. This is we're MVP here. only. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if Kirby was. We can, I mean, you can risk it. We want, we want, are we trying to fill the grid or are we just trying to go low score? <clears throat> go Maurer. Go Maurer? Go Maurer. I played against Maurer in my draft. Joe. Is it M-A-U? Yeah. M-A-U, E-R. 46 oh, percent God, that's terrible labby it that's is. all right that's all right. we're we're doing good though right uh that that, that craig campbell is kind of shitty yeah uh all-star MV- this is e- i mean it's all-star not mvp or no would probably be lower than i bet you because yeah, i bet you would yeah. it doesn't matter we got it MVP. we're gonna fill the grid all-star, all-star MVP. mvp any team now anybody in the history was an all-star and mvp uh, jay bell ever an all-star mvp shortstop yeah, yeah see a i don't couple know home runs um it's got to be somebody that's just a fucking random dude. Or you can, like, I was thinking a pitcher, because not many people might go pitcher for Pedro. the MVP. Kershaw won an MVP. Kershaw, Verlander. Pedro won MVP, too? I thought he was that year he struck out. I'm trying to think who else. Other randoms. Guys like Bagwell. Biggio. No, he had to be an MVP. Was Bagwell MVP, though? I think he was. <laughs> A Rod, you know what I mean? Trout, I, you just don't know what their numbers are gonna, the percentage is gonna be. Yeah, I mean, okay. I like Clayton, Clayton Kershaw. I think a pitcher that's different, right? Yeah. We'll see. Let's, let's go, Clayton. Clayton Kershaw, two percent. Two percent. I mean, that still seems kind. Of, I mean, it's low, but that still seems like a lot for a pitcher because not many pitchers win MVPs. Yeah, but only two percent. That's not. I mean. Uh, I mean, Twins, Phillies. I the, I can still only think of uh, Tommy Cruz. Uh, oh, f- Tommy, yeah. Unless you can find a pitcher, but we said a couple dogs, right? We said uh, was it Ruthven and and Gladden. What do you want to do, Twins, Seattle? Do you want to go Nelson Cruz? I know that one's a, a Nelson. Twins. Oh no, hey. Um, I'm sure this is boring. Frank Cor, Jeff Frank Cor. Mm, well, he was a brave. Oh, he was he a brave been, Philly. He would have been Philly. That would have been better than Craig Kimbrell. Yeah, it would have. Damn it. Yeah, that's my fault. I should have known better. Terrible, <laughs> terrible execution. And- I mean, Seattle and Twins. I mean, I could just think of Nelson Cruz. That we, if we, if there's a pitcher, did uh, C check? He, he was a Philly. Twins? He was a Philly. I don't know. Steve Chichek? I don't know how to spell his last name. <laughs> Let me. I'm gonna go with him. You can go with Ruthven. I for th- the I'm Phillies. T- I don't know if he. Pit- I know he pitched for other teams. I mean, had- we should know this being dogs fans too. By the way, no, nope, Chichek wasn't. No, so I don't want to. I'm wait. down. Don't go. Don't do it. I'm. That's my my ballot. See, so now I'm down a vote. I can only do one. So he's not gonna fill his grid. <sighs> I don't know. Which I've I've only filled like two grids. <laughs> like um, ever. Like Ovi, he'll fill them all up. He'll send them to me. Like, Should we go with the dog? What, Gladden? You want me to test it out first yeah. since I'm already down one? I'll do Ruth Ruthven and you do Gladden. Dan Gladden right there. Nope. Damn it. R U T H two eighty four. I can't spell. Average score six point nine. 
Yeah, so the average people they got 6.9 squares. Here we go. So here's now this is where it gets to the possible answers. It shows you all of them. Mm. Yeah, we're totally boring. It's This is great, though. It's so much fun. I love doing this. This is fun. All right, you ready? Yeah, which one? Ruth Finn. Because I, I just I know he played for the Philly, uh, but Tommy Tommy's gonna be high. Tommy's gonna be high. I don't 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 scroll down, Chad. Well, you can do I, most I don't popular. scroll down. Most popular. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see it. Here we go. You ready? We hit a bunch of the most popular ones. Three. Oh, it was wrong. I'm surprised Griffey's only sixteen percent. Damn. Okay. But see, that's where everybody tries to think that way. They're. I forgot. I'm gonna go out. Nelson Crude, bro. I didn't. Robinson Cano was a brave. I didn't remember that. <clears throat> I don't two thirty. I missed one. Ruthven was wrong. Tomei was the most, but twenty six percent. Kimbrel was the most. So then this right here tells you everybody lab. <laughs> hey, immaculate grid. If you're not playing, go this takes play. you to baseball. Right. They have to get on there. They have football, uh, basketball for the basketball fans. I think soccer and hockey as well. Yeah, football. I'm terrible at. Uh, football is hard to uh, know. Th- yeah, multiple teams. I'm usually awful at football, but. Uh, Lab, I think you'll be good at that immaculate grid. I think so too. Once you get, yeah, now you got the kind kind of the gist of it. it, Yeah, and you don't have to do it all at once. You can come back throughout the day. Touch it up. And if you're out there listening and you do play, uh, post your post your scores, tag us in it. I want to see. It's fun. It's a good time. Um, Usually not very good, especially when you get some dogs. I've had a handful of of full grids, but not not a bunch. (laughs) So, but I always go dogs first. That's my strategy. So. Uh, labs, I appreciate it, brother. It's always a pleasure to have you in. I like coming on. I, hey, now that you know we can do it more, we'll have you more. Um, and we'll still we'll just you know steer clear of topics that may possibly get you in trouble. We just never know, right? We never know. Um, again, everybody, I appreciate you. Everybody listening, go uh, make sure you're downloading the podcast. Go subscribe, or if you're watching here on YouTube, hit subscribe for us and uh, check out the new Hit or Die store. Uh, new hat available. Uh, it's a Raiders style. So uh, let's it's not just Raiders. Not, well, the idea kind of came off from, from the that. Raiders. But uh, it'll be some different colors. But go check out the Hit or Die store. It'll be in this link or in the description of the uh, YouTube channel. Also in the uh, download or for the audio. And then also on Twitter, Instagram. And uh, that's another episode of the Hit or Die podcast. Hit or Die. Ooh, yeah.